At PNC Private Bank, we want to know what drives you. We call that your why. Once we understand it, we'll build a personalized wealth plan to help you achieve it. So tell us, what's your why? Copyright 2021, the PNC Financial Services Group, Inc. All rights reserved, PNC Bank National Association, member FDIC. A former Boeing pilot is expected to be charged in the 737 MAX probe. Plus, German voters face a future without Chancellor Angela Merkel on the ballot. It is quite a tectonic change for Germany. And why this Christmas could be costlier than ever. It's Friday, September 17th. I'm Mark Stewart with The Wall Street Journal. Here's the AM edition of What's News. The top headlines and business stories moving your world today. We begin with a WSJ exclusive. Federal prosecutors plan to criminally charge a former Boeing pilot they suspect of misleading aviation regulators about safety issues blamed for two fatal crashes of the 737 MAX. This is according to people familiar with the matter who add that Mark Forkner is likely to face prosecution in the coming weeks. He was Boeing 737 MAX chief technical pilot during the aircraft's development. An attorney for Forkner didn't respond to our request for comment. A Justice Department spokesman and Boeing declined to comment. We have much more on this on WSJ.com. France said it had been betrayed by the U.S. after being pushed out of a multi-billion dollar deal to supply submarines to Australia. As we talked about this week, President Biden announced a new security pact with Australia and the UK that would include a long-term agreement to build nuclear-powered submarines for Australia. Australia confirmed on Thursday it was withdrawing from the French contract. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said there was no regional divide separating the interests of America's Atlantic and Pacific partners. And today we'll be following a meeting about COVID-19 vaccine boosters. An outside Food and Drug Administration advisory panel is set to meet to weigh evidence on the extra shots, a topic that has divided federal health officials. We'll keep you posted on the Journal app. We've talked a lot lately about commodities such as oil, gold, and silver, but now uranium is getting the attention of investors. And in case you're wondering, uranium is used in nuclear power plants. So why is this happening? Let's turn to my colleague, Will Horner, who covers commodities from his base in London. Will, good morning. Morning, Mark. Will, what's happening here? Well, uranium, the commodity, is really kind of rallying very sharply, and that's really captured the attention of investors Uranium prices have shot up to about $40 a pound from $30 a pound at the start of the year. And that's because supply of uranium has been reduced over the last 10 years. But recently, there's been growing interest in the role of uranium, the role of nuclear power in efforts to mitigate climate change. And so some are expecting demand for uranium will rise. Some traders, as we've been reporting, are are comparing this to the rise of GameStop and AMC. What's echoing here? Well, you have both big institutional investors like hedge funds and individual retail traders betting on uranium. So Reddit's Wall Street Bets page, for example, which we know so well for GameStop and AMC, there's been a lot of bullish chatter there among those retail traders about uranium. Um, And there's even a specific page on Reddit called Uranium Squeeze, which is dedicated to retail investors who are sort of keen on the metal and want to invest in it and bet on it. Obviously, a lot of online discussion. Will, what's the long-term view on this? Well, not everybody is as convinced about the rally. There's kind of mixed opinions about the role of nuclear power in sort of global efforts to, to sort of challenge climate change. And the very steep price rise for uranium and for uranium mining stocks it's got some investors just concerned that that could, you know, suddenly reverse and suddenly change course. Will Horner this morning from London. Will, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Just ahead, Germany prepares for its national election. We'll discuss after the break.
what's important to you? What drives you? What do you want your wealth to do? At PNC Private Bank, we call that your why, and we want to understand yours. Maybe it's creating a legacy, buying a home, or enjoying your retirement. Whatever your goals are, we'll work with you to build a personalized wealth plan to help you achieve it. So tell us, what's your why? To learn more, please visit pnc.com slash private bank. Copyright 2021, the PNC Financial Services Group, Inc. All rights reserved, PNC Bank National Association, member FDIC. At the end of the month, German voters will go to the polls for a national election. For the first time in 16 years, one name will be missing from the ballot. Chancellor Angela Merkel is not running as the head of the Conservative Party. Merkel has shaped German politics, domestic and foreign. And as Europe's largest economy, German politics have a huge impact on the EU and the rest of the world. So how could her departure shift the global political landscape? For more, I'm joined by our Berlin correspondent, Boyan Panchevsky. Boyan, hello. Hey, Mark. Boyan, 16 years is a long time. The youngest voters will not remember a time without Angela Merkel at the helm. What's the feeling like in Germany right now going into this election? Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, 16 years is an incredibly long time for a Western democracy. It is quite a tectonic change for Germany. German politics have been sort of dominated by this figure, Angela Merkel, the kind of the eternal chancellor who has with time become a sort of a presidential figure, if you will. And now that she leaves, there's quite a bit of a gap in the political scene. And I think that is being felt in the polls because her party is is basically going down the drain they are polling at uh, 20% and 19%, which is a historic low. And one of the major reasons for that is, is her absence from, from, uh, from the ballot. Well, Boyan, let's take that even a step further. Germany has a multi-party system. Merkel is the head of the Christian Democratic Union, the CDU. They are conservative for Germany, but Merkel has kept the party fairly centrist throughout her tenure. At times, she has gotten pushback for adopting more liberal policies on family, on climate change, immigration, for example. Has that shift impacted the CDU in this election? I think it's difficult to say whether that shift has impacted the party polling in this election. What we're seeing now is that uh, that shift towards the center and, and even towards the left, if you will, in the American sense of a liberal, she also has been seen as a liberal. Some of her policies have definitely been liberal. Her opponents within the party have always said that she is in in a way diminishing the profile of the party and that would have a negative impact on their performance in elections. But now we're seeing that actually the negative impact comes with her absence. So a lot of pollsters are saying actually she found the secret, she found the actual recipe for success in modern Germany. It seems like people do want a conservative leader who also has liberal policies. Also, another kind of um, proof of this theory is that the all the candidates running for chancellor in this election, including the conservative one, but also the the front runner in the polls, the social democrat, the kind of liberal left leader, all of them are trying to emulate even the behavior, let alone the policies of Angela Merkel. And it seems like despite all the controversies, despite the polarizations of the past few years, it would appear that voters actually prefer the approach of Angela Merkel across the board. Economically speaking, what are the main challenges for the next government and what are some solutions on the table? According to polls, a lot of people are really anxious about climate change and that will require some painful changes. You know, Germany, the, perhaps the sort of the fundamental industry in Germany uh, is is the car industry and the entire ecosystem around the car industry, the suppliers, the various small companies that, that work with the big car makers. 
And, you know, with, with the trend shifting towards uh, electric cars, electric mobility, you know, a lot of jobs will go lost. Uh, a lot of changes are bound to take place. And the, the question is how, how to deal with that. One, one specific challenge and a huge challenge for Germany is, is uh, energy. You know, Europe's biggest economy, Euro, Europe's biggest industrial power is starved for energy because of in part because of the policy of, of Angela Merkel, she decided to abruptly phase out nuclear energy. So nuclear reactors will be shut down before time and fairly quickly. And at the same time, they're, they're uh, exiting coal generation. So they're squeezed be between these two policies and uh, sustainable energy sources are not sufficient to power this enormous industry here. And, and that, that is a huge challenge, which, which remains for, for, the, for the successor of, of Angela Merkel. So there are the economic challenges, but then politically speaking, Germany is is one of the top U.S. allies, of course, and a huge force in the EU. We all know elections have consequences. How could American-German relations change, if at all? I think the Social Democrats are less intrinsically transatlantic, uh, transatlantic orientated than than the Conservatives. Um, but, however, I, I'm not sure that matters much. I think. The form of the relationship will remain cordial, I think. One thing that is almost certain nowadays in Berlin is that, that the fundamental sort of direction of travel for the German politics and the government it remains fairly well entrenched. You know, like it's a pro-European country. It's very much in favor of the European Union. It's very much in favor of nurturing the transatlantic relationship whenever it's possible. But the realities of the new global setting, the realities of China rising, obviously are a major factor. So while, you know, there could be policy changes uh, in, in years to come, I think it won't be, you know, drastically different from what Angela Merkel has been doing. Boyan Panchevsky in Berlin for us. Boyan, thank you. Thank you, Mark. And finally, decking the halls this year could be more expensive than ever. Artificial Christmas tree sellers are being hit hard by supply chain disruptions, high shipping costs, and delivery delays. So for some consumers, getting your hands on festive goods this holiday season may be a challenge. Here's WSJ reporter Paul Berger. I mean, the message that I heard from all of the retailers I spoke to was that if you're thinking of buying a tree or decorations, the best thing to do is to go out and <laughs> buy your merchandise now, get it early, because it could be that if you leave it till the time you normally do that kind of shopping, you could find that there are items in stock, but they're not the items that you want. So if you have your eye on something, if you know what it is you want to buy, then you should probably look at ordering it now. And that's what's news for Friday. But before you begin the weekend, check back with us for a new podcast tonight. I'm Mark Stewart for The Wall Street Journal. Glad you could spend part of your week with us. Thanks for listening.